right that there. jab to Paul, Boom. looking for the right time for that right. Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got in this situation. What's that? You're not wondering? This is just the natural life cycle of YouTubers, is what you're thinking? Well, sh- Why did I decide to participate in iDubbbz's Creator Clash charity boxing event where some ripped Australian guy was going to punch me in front of everyone I ever loved? On my birthday! And I wasn't even getting paid to get punched in the head! Well, I used to always be the skinny kid growing up. Not because I was eating healthy, no. I was eating... nothing. I would see all the healthy food in the fridge at home and go, Aw, oh, dang. There's nothing to eat! It wasn't until March of 2020 that I started exercising more seriously. There wasn't a lot else to do during that time, if you know what I mean. I have a really buff friend, DJ Welch, who you might know as the beefiest guy in Creator Clash. We got into a Discord call one day and he showed me how to exercise, and we liked each other so much that we continued to work out virtually three times a week. And I learned a really good life hack to keep a consistent workout schedule, which is to have a gym partner. Especially one that's more experienced and knows what they're doing, and between sets you can complement his muscles completely platonically. When you're working out by yourself, it's so easy to think, Hmm, my feet hurt. I don't want to work out. I want to binge all 12 seasons of The Big Bang Theory and not laugh at all. But if you have someone waiting for you at the gym expecting you to lift weights with them, you're not going to flake. As much. Plus, you get to look at muscles in the gym platonically. Sometimes you have to search for opportunities. And sometimes Ian from the channel iDubs drops into your DMs and asks, Hey, want to get in a fight? With a bunch of other YouTubers? Completely platonically? It was probably the fact that I had been working out for quite some time, mixed with ignorance of what I was actually signing up for, that I, without any hesitation, was immediately on board with the idea and responded in all caps, YES! I'VE ACTUALLY BEEN WORKING OUT! I was going to be fighting an Australian YouTuber named I Did A Thing. Which is such a stupid username. His whole username is made up of four one-syllable words. That's like a whole sentence. Dude's got a whole sentence in his username. I didn't have any information on I Did A Thing. While most fighters got to actually meet their opponents and go on their podcasts, I had to stalk my opponent's Twitter for any information I could use. Aha! A clue! He says in this tweet that he's 6'4". <laughs> I'm in trouble. But at least I did a thing had even less information about me. <laughs> Try finding a recent picture of what I look like in 2022, Alex. Google says I'm 5'9 for some reason, which now that I think about it, that would make our fight seem way more stacked in his favor. So yeah, I'm totally 5'9 and not 6 foot. Yeah, I did a thing was clobbering on a slightly taller Michael Reeves. I told DJ, hey, I'm going to be in a boxing match. Good thing I'm starting to put on muscle. And DJ said, oh, no, what we've been working on won't help you in boxing whatsoever. What? So ever? So Ian found me a boxing coach named Michael Flores, who's a four times Emmy nominated belt holder and a total bro. I started training in January with the fight happening in May. And even though the final results may not have looked like it, I did train hard for this and took it very seriously. Michael wanted me to train every single day except for Sunday, and DJ could have me on Fridays. <laughs> DJ, Michael's gonna be my new gym bro, bro. Bro, I'm gonna miss lifting with you, bro. The very first time I trained with Michael, he told me, boxing isn't something that you should take lightly. When you step into that ring, you're going to war. And I said, oh, yeah, dude, don't, don't worry. I work out. I know all about war, like a lot. But it wasn't until my third training session where it actually hit me. Huh. I'm going to be fighting I did a thing in front of all my fans and loved ones and will have an incredible amount of motivation not to lose and look bad. And I did a thing will be fighting me in front of all of his fans and loved ones and will also have an incredible amount of motivation not to lose and look bad. This is probably what Michael was talking about. And this is where I learned another amazing workout life hack. If you need motivation to get in shape, pay someone in Australia to come beat you up on your birthday. You'll tell yourself, am I really not going to go on a run today when there's a dude in Australia who wants to beat me up? Am I really going to eat this cupcake when a dude in Australia wants to punch me in the solar plex? In February, Ian tweeted out, 
Looking for a heavyweight content creator, 200 plus pounds who is down to box. Last spot available, you will be fighting a legendary Twitch streamer. And in March, DJ messaged me, Hey, is Ian still looking for someone? And it turned out he was still looking for someone, so in April, DJ got added to the roster, and me and him are reunited! So DJ had about a month and a half to train, which was a little less than me, but I think he turned out fine. Oh, he's coming forward and he goes down. Since none of us were professional boxers, that meant this was a brand new and frankly bat crap crazy experience that we were all facing together. Every single fighter trained hard for months, and we all respected the gosh darn hell out of each other. The level of camaraderie at this event was insane. And platonic. None of the fighters had any real beef with each other, except Dad, maybe? I don't know, it's hard to get a read on that guy. Whenever a fighter was done with their match and they returned to their locker room, regardless if they just won or lost the fight, everyone would applaud them and tell them good job. At least that was the blue corner, I don't know what the red corner was doing. So. Let's talk about my fight. If you can call it that. <laughs> there are a surprising amount of strategy and fundamentals in the sport of boxing, but the moment that that bell rings and there's a dude from Australia trying to kill you mixed with the most adrenaline you've ever felt in your life, all those fundamentals go out the window. I lasted 0.74 rounds. I wish I could tell you about all the intricate strategies that played out in my head, but the only thoughts I had during the fight were, survive, 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 ow, where am I? After months of work and literal gallons of sweat later, I only lasted for a minute and a half, which actually isn't too far off from what it's like working in animation. I had a few notes on my performance, like I definitely should have moved my head better, and yeah, I got hit in the head. A lot, but I did get Alex with this nice body shot and he did this weird spinning move, and then I just watched him do it for some reason. It is what it is. Half of us had to lose, and I lost. And now there exists some amazing gifts of me getting socked in the head. These are going to outlive me. At the end of it all, I'm still extremely glad to have been a part of this. Not only did the event raise $1.3 million for Alzheimer's Association, but I also went out of my comfort zone and challenged myself. Even though I got my butt handed to me, the journey was worth it. You don't grow as a person by winning all the time. You have to lose in order to get stronger. I didn't think I'd ever say this, but I still want to continue boxing training just without the looming threat of a chiseled kangaroo beating me up on my birthday. I have a much deeper appreciation for the sport of boxing and anyone who is brave enough to step into the ring. And if this was the first boxing show you ever watched, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're thinking about putting some gloves on and giving boxing a try, then I totally recommend it. Hitting things is a whole lot of fun. I want to thank my coach, Michael Flores, who's an amazing guy and always pushed me to do my best, even after I lost. I want to thank DJ, who's been an amazing virtual workout partner, and I probably wouldn't have even had the confidence to participate if it wasn't for him. I want to thank my girlfriend, who got me my custom outfit for my birthday and supported me through all my training. I want to thank Anissa and Ian for putting on this amazing event. As first events go, it went over flawlessly. I want to thank my opponent, Alex, along with all the other fighters who train hard. It was super fun meeting all of you.